Soon we'll be celebrating Mother's Day and hope this year you do what most of the Growing Deer team's doing and spend some quality time with mom. It's the time of year to chase turkeys here in the Midwest, and during the early season in Missouri, I was doing more chasing than tagging. <laughs> Opening day, I had a great encounter with a tom that gobbled many times. but he never offered a clean shot. This time of year, we move most of our Reconyx cameras from where we expect to see deer to where we expect to see turkeys. One of those cameras was placed at a plot we called Clover Mountain, and every few days, it would show a tom using the area. Based on that information, several days ago, Clay and I hunted Clover Mountain, but we never heard or saw a tom in that area. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Reconyx, Redmond Hunt, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Flatwood Natives, Morel Targets, Hoyman, Hooks Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Summit Tree Stands, Drake Non-Typical Clothing, RTP Outdoors, Yamaha, Fourth Arrow, Scent Crusher, Mossy Oak Properties of the Heartland, Motorola Lighting Solutions, Scorpion Venom Archery, Bloodsport Arrows, Code Blue, Decode, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blood. Yesterday during the early evening, I heard a tom near Clover Mountain, and I assumed he'd roost close by. Early this morning, Tyler and I went to Clover Mountain, hoping that bird would fire off. I gave a few calls, and a tom on both sides of the mountain responded. It sounded like the tom to our west was closer and had an easier path to approach where we were set up. Yeah, bird. See, turn around or not closer, right? The next gobble was from the tom on the east side of the mountain, and he sounded a good bit closer. This bird's gonna come in, but we're in a bad setup. Once the toms hit the ground, we decided to reposition to a cedar tree that gave us more cover. It wasn't long till he gobbled again, and it sounded like he'd made it to the top of the mountain. I think that was actually closer. He'd be looking around and figuring out how we can turn around. Cause that was gonna come in first, I think. Oh my gosh, he's close. That's the one behind us, isn't it? Just let him walk by us. He's down in the field somewhere. He may swing around us. We couldn't see or film the tom, but we knew he was very close because I could hear every bit of his gobble. Yeah. Can you do 
Jesus. <laughs> you know, you know that part you said about when you get comfortable? <laughs> when I stand up, I might get comfortable because if you look upset and I'm on a slope <laughs> on gravel, my, not being crude, but my fanny's gonna look like I was in a tiger fight when I stand up. Whew, baby, that was good, man. <laughs> I, he was back here. Way back there. We set up for a bird over here. And this one was off the slope down the valley. It was like, is that on our property? So we set up looking this way. This bird went silent on us. And I was calling and scratching leaves and doing my thing. And all of a sudden I said, this bird's closer. We might want to think about moving over here and looking back this way, but I really thought this bird would come on in. And then he gobbled here off the edge of the food plot. And I thought, oh, it's a little late for that now. We got to let him walk by. And Fortunately, I was, I literally was praying. He dropped off the ridge, went below us, obviously could see the decoy, so he swung back up. Because yeah. I had it set right there on the lip. Yeah. And I could hear him, I kept tracking and moving my gun and tracking. And he popped up right there, I'm guessing 50 yards. And I would have waited and let him come back here to the decoy, but I was afraid he would something would go wrong. Mm -hmm. And being the third week of Missouri season, I knew I could take him there, so I enjoyed the show, let him gobble a few times, and touched her off. That was a classic Ozark mountain hunt, folks. This isn't Kansas where you see him coming 400 yards across the field. This is Ozark mountain country where I'm guessing we can see seven yards this way. We set up here, this doesn't look ideal, but we set up here because this is the flattest 50 yards for a long ways around here. And so that's why we set up here. Goodness gracious. Let's go see what we got. <laughs> or let's get off the rocks, or one of the two. <laughs> that tom was down by 6.45. I love those early mornings, especially when the toms are responding. We're gonna hang around here and celebrate and go back up to the shop, clean this tom up, and have some fresh wild turkey for the Woods family. Had a great hunt this morning here in the Ozark Mountains. Always fun to tag a bird at home. But in addition to that, it's great to bring home some fresh wild meat. The first thing I do when dressing a tom is to remove the beard. Grab it right at the base, put my other hand to hold it and pull it out. Twist it a little, pull. Then I start skinning right down the sternum. I do this by putting the point of my knife just barely in the skin, blade up. That way when I'm cutting, I'm not dragging feathers into the meat. And the more you free up, the easier it is to remove the breast, the meat, just a little bit later on. Once I've skinned out the breast area, I start working down the top of the thigh. Wild turkey drumsticks and thighs are excellent meat. I don't want to waste that, so after I have it skinned out, I separate the meat from the thigh and the skeleton of the turkey, pull a little bit, and now we'll expose the ball joint. I trim around the ball joint, and I can remove the entire leg. I usually remove one leg and then work on the breast, leaving the other leg for a handle. Wild turkey breast meat is truly a delicacy, and I don't want to waste any, so I take my sharp knife and flay right down the edge of the sternum, peeling the breast meat back. You can see the separation right here. That's the turkey tenderloin. Once I've separated the breast meat from the sternum, I simply go underneath to make sure no skin is attached, and I can lift out the entire breast. I repeat this process for the other half of the breast. You might notice that I also trim around the crop when removing the breast. The crop is a large bag-like structure that stores food before it goes into the gizzard where turkeys grind it up. After all the meat is removed, I pinch up to take a little pressure off, make an incision, then spread it open and check out what he's been eating. The inside of a turkey crop doesn't smell anything like the inside of a deer's rumen or stomach, so don't be bashful. Inside this Tom's crop, well, I was a bit surprised. 
There was a bunch of Eagle Seed Forage soybeans. We just planted a food plot not far away from where I tagged that Tom, and he'd obviously been scratching in there, robbing my beans, and cheating me from getting some forage later this summer. I'm really not mad at the Tom. We plant about 200,000 plus seeds per acre, so 50 or 60 isn't gonna hurt that plot. Along with the soybean seeds, some of our clovers are ripening right now and producing seed, and there was a bunch of clover seed in that turkey's crop. Knowing what a turkey's eating that day is great scouting information for when you go hunting the next time. I call it scouting from the skinning shed. Well, man, guys, Tracy and I really thank everyone for being part of our team. And I'm thankful that we were able to harvest the turkey during this really tough year. So let's have a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this day. And I thank you for providing us with great friends and great fellowship. And keep us safe tonight, Lord, and keep our community safe as these storms roll through. We appreciate the rain. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to learn more about the Growing Deer team's techniques to chase turkeys throughout the entire season, please subscribe to the Growing Deer channel and give us a thumbs up. Several of the Growing Deer team members are still chasing turkeys and we're bringing you the results of those hunts soon. Hope you have a chance to get outside and chase turkeys or just simply enjoy creation. But most importantly, take time every day to slow down, be quiet, and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer. Beautiful morning in the Ozark Mountains. It's all quiet now. Mm -hmm.